Fun Facts presents the 1969 Chevrolet Corvette ZL1. This monster was a beast. It's a classic muscle car and it was introduced in 1969. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So let's get started now. The 1969 ZL1 Corvette came equipped with an entirely new big block engine option that produced more horsepower than any Corvette that had come before it. Any Corvette, when ordered with the RPO ZL1, came fitted with an all-aluminum 427 CI engine that featured a dry sump oil system and weight approximately 100 pounds less than the L88 engine. The ZL1 was a mid-year release for the 1969 Corvette and was actually developed to replace the legendary L88. In addition to the all-aluminum block, the engine featured stouter connecting rods and open chamber heads. Corvettes equipped with the ZL1 option also required a handful of other mandatory options including the F41 special front and rear suspension, the G81 posse traction rear axle, the, G, the JF6 special heavy duty brakes, and the K66 um, ignition. The ZL1's ultra-high performance engine was developed by Chevrolet in cooperation with McLaren, or McLaren, for use in the SCCA's Canadian American Challenge Cup Series racing. While the engine was officially rated at 430 bhp, the same rating as the L88 engine, the actual engine output of the 427CI was between 560 and 585 brake horsepower. It was simply put, a racing mill let loose on the street. Wow. The evolution of the ZL1 Corvette is an interesting story and significant milestone in the development of the Corvette as both a high performance street vehicle and a race car. Although the car never saw much, if any, Used as a conventional road-driven Corvette, its creation by GM skirted violating the Automobile Manufacturers Association's ban on the production of factory-built race cars, a ban that Chevrolet had openly participated in since 1957. In 1968, Chevrolet's performance products, Chief Vince Piggins, had begun lobbying for a creation of an all-aluminum big block engine. He recognized that other manufacturers were finding success in the Canadian-American Can-Am race circuits, and he believed that the Corvette could not only contend in that market, but it could become a dominant contender with the current racing setup. After all, small block Chevy-powered McLaren racers had begun their domination of the Can-Am series in 1967. When Chevrolet failed to meet the demands of the developing their own big block variant for those racers, Bruce McLaren threatened to pull the engines from his cars and look to Ford for a comparable lightweight big block engine to power his 1968 Can-Am cars. It was at this point Piggins stepped in, explaining to the top brass at GM that Ford could and would produce a big block engine that would be used to replace all the Chevy small block engines in McLaren's racers. Not to be one upped by Ford, Chevrolet gave the green light for development of the big block engine and the rest is history. Now equipped with the new ZL1 engine, McLaren's racers dominated the Cam N series from 1968 to 1971, winning 32 of the 37 events hosted in that series during that time period. While, while win on Sunday, sell on Monday has tended to hold true throughout the history of the Corvette brand, 
The reality behind the 1969 ZL Corvette is that the car prohibitively was expensive. Even for consumers who wanted to purchase a race-ready Corvette, the ZL1 option alone cost $4,718, which was $63 less than the base price of the 69 Corvette Coupe at $4,781 and add that to the handful of other required options listed above, all told the purchase price of the 1969 ZL1 Corvette was $10,048.15. Because of the price, just two of these cars were ever sold by Corvette, and these, only one has ever been fully documented. <clears throat> However, Records from the Tunawanda engine plant indicated that 94 ZL1 engines with Corvette prefixes were built in 1969. Of these 80 were coded for use with manual transmission and 14 for use with automatics. Corvette historians acknowledge that the majority of these engines were sold to racers through, or though a few of them were sold to private parties. There were also a handful of ZL1 equipped 1969 Corvettes that were used by Chevrolet engineering department, including one that was once piloted by chief engineer Zora Arcus Duntoff. Allegedly, these cars were used as performance test beds for driveline and suspension upgrades. Wow. So before these engineering cars were retired, they were driven and reviewed by Road and Track magazine and Road and Track reported that the 2,945 pound ZL1 was capable of zero to 60 miles per hour that would launch of just four seconds in a quarter mile time and just 12.1 seconds at 116 miles an hour. Based on this information, it's no wonder that Chevrolet required the additional upgrade suspension and braking installed on the ZL1 Corvettes. The standard Corvette chassis and brake system of that era would have been insufficient to handle that much power. The 1969 Chevrolet Corvette ZL1, there is much debate about whether the Corvette is even a muscle car. If you can't get past that, there is even more debate about which one is best. For many, the 1969 Corvette ZL1 sits atop the list, and for good reason. It was designed to replace the L88, another absolute beast of a Corvette. Part of what makes the ZL1 so special is its limited production numbers. <clears throat> Officially records show that 94 <clears throat> ZL1 engines slated to be used in Corvettes were built, but less than five were actually ever sold by Chevy. Part of why it is so rare was its prohibitive cost at the time. But what you got for the cost was phenomenal. The ZL1 produced 430 horsepower from the factory. Thought that power figure is known to be blatantly understated. This powerful engine is known to produce well over 500 horsepower. It could power the ZL1 to 60 miles per hour in four seconds and it could torch the quarter mile drag strip in 12.1 seconds. To help tame this power, the ZL1 was also treated with brake and suspension upgrades. Only adding to its desirability is its appearance. The C3 Corvette is one of the best looking Corvettes of all time. Fortunately, the ZL1 was offered before the 1970s slowly created a rift between its styling and performance car it could no longer be. 
Well, if you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch the video. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all the muscle cars, all the sports cars, all the hybrid cars, the supercars. We'll be doing autoramas and car shows with hot rods and custom cars. So a little bit of everything for everybody. And again, thank you for taking the time. And we'd like to wish you a great day. And always, always, always take good care. Thank you.